Inside Science. This has been a month of protest against the use of force by police against black people and people of color, and also against the wider structural racism in our society. And academia is no exception. This month, scientists of color have been sharing their experiences of working in an academic environment that can hold them back. A paper published at the beginning of this month found that black scientists matched to white scientists on gender, career stage, degree type, institute prestige, and area of expertise were 25% less likely to receive funding from the US National Institutes of Health. By systemically marginalizing black voices, we both directly harm people and deprive science of countless voices. This month has been a wake-up call for anyone who imagines science to be free of systemic racism. It is not. And whilst this was happening, COVID-19 continued to spread. Now, last month, we reported on a number of studies testing potential treatments for the disease. But since then, one of those studies has come under intense scrutiny. Now, this Lancet publication claimed that the drug chloroquine was not effective against coronavirus and was actually even harmful. Now, the paper declared it included data from over 96,000 COVID-19 patients, and it helped to convince the World Health Organization to stop chloroquine trials. But if you look at the methods, you'll see that the data was not collected by the researchers. Rather, it came from the database of a company called Surgisphere. Now, companies collaborating with researchers is nothing new, but an investigation by the Guardian newspaper revealed that Surgisphere was not all that it seemed. According to the report, the company listed only six employees, which later became three. The CEO was named in multiple medical malpractice suits, and although the company claimed to run a huge hospital database, it had almost no online presence. So, Investigators dug into the data and they uncovered clear anomalies. For example, in Australia, on the 21st of April, Surgisphere claims to have recorded 73 COVID-19 deaths. But other records show that that day, only 67 people died of COVID-19 in the whole of Australia. Five key hospitals were then contacted about their involvement and they said they'd never heard of Surgisphere. So now, that Lancet article has been retracted. And there are still a number of other papers that suggest chloroquine may be harmful to COVID-19 sufferers, but this one should be consigned to the trash. And now, time for some discoveries that hopefully won't be debunked next week. Now perhaps, like me, you're feeling a bit stressed out. Maybe life would be simpler with a move to a quieter neighborhood. How about the habitable zone of GJ887? a red dwarf star a mere 11 light years away with two recently revealed super-Earth-sized planets. Now, unfortunately, these planets orbit quite close to their star, making their surface too hot for liquid water. Not ideal for habitation. But the story doesn't end there. The researchers predicted the existence of these planets indirectly by analyzing the speed the star was spinning. This radial velocity of the star is affected by the gravitational pull of any orbiting planets, and the researchers have found another signal in the radial velocity data. If it is a third planet, the measurements will put it right in the habitable zone where liquid water could form. And thankfully, GJ887 is relatively quiet for a red dwarf, throwing off fewer solar flares, ideal for not incinerating your new home. The same cannot be said, however, for these. Planetary nebulae, thrown off by red giants reaching the end of their lives. These are the most comprehensive scans of NGC 7027 and NGC 6302, the Butterfly Nebula, to date. Taken with the Hubble Space Telescope's Wide Field Camera 3, they reveal unprecedented detail of the structure of the two nebulae. The major blowouts of NGC 7027 in green, lined with delicate red dust filaments, and the undulations of the Butterfly Nebula that might have been shaped by the winds emanating from near a central star. And as stars reach the end of their life, a select few will become this, a black hole. These black holes should all 
paradoxically, be associated with a certain pattern of light. And if you want to know why, then check out this article on the Inside Science website. But that's all this month from me. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Inside Science. If you enjoyed this edition, follow us on the web and social media. Powered by the American Institute of Physics and a coalition of underwriters.